So I'm going to show you how to build a printer on Minecraft Bedrock. It's just a basic version of a printer. Uh, it's not the fastest one ever, but I have modified this particular design so it prints in 25 seconds. You kind of combine four of them together. So um, it is a good sort of base design to learn how it works. So uh, the first step uh, I'm going to do is to build the item filters. So you need kind of a, a double item filter. So uh, to start with a block, I've just started a new world. Come right up in the IC. Uh, the coordinates there, 200 up. Um, um, so make a line of eight. So one, uh, any just any block you want, uh, any building block. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then just put a gap there, and then a further. So just two rows of eight like that. Um, and then come out and double them up, and then go underneath and put another one there. Like that. And just bring one forward from the underneath there, like that. And bring these across. <laughs> like that. And just grab some repeaters. See, it should look like that shape. And then grab a repeater and put it facing into this block here. Make sure you keep them on one tick. It's really important that these go on one tick now, so you get sort of covered up, so just do check that they're all on one tick there you haven't accidentally clicked on them because that will mess up your, your print if you are if they're not on one tick so just one tick is just don't touch the repeater at all uh, seal them in like that so you should have a shape that looks like that so then if you come across make three blocks like that that's come up above it and you see sort of level with it and then above these are just temporary walls but just make a line of walls like this. Go along the back. And then grab some hoppers and put the hoppers in like this. So your first one goes level. So you level with a the circuit there and facing into that wall that you've just made. So put those hoppers in there. And then like that. Um, can then get rid of the wall here okay then if you grab some chests and just put chests along that bottom row there it should, it should be like four and four and get rid of that those chests are where when your concrete gets filtered it's all going to end up in there so we're filtering for this is an item filter for um, the 16 colours of concrete that there are in the game so uh, okay I'm going to make the dropper line here so I'll just grab some droppers there so you want your dropper to face in if you start at the left hand side and face your dropper in so the other face is in like that and it starts one over the edge that's to stick out by one you've got a crouch click there you go Ooh. There you go. So, see so dropper line like that. Uh, then next, you need to power the dropper line. Now, it's really important you don't directly power them. If you directly power them, you'll skip a lane on the item filter. So, each of these hoppers represents one of the colours, one of the sixteen colours. So, if you directly power uh, one of these droppers, the, the 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 block that's inside it will get moved over by a couple and you'll skip lanes and you definitely you, that so it won't work so don't directly power them just put a block there you could put the blocks on top if you want but for this particular build I need them at the side here so uh, just go up a couple there these are observers just facing this way in this orientation again drag them back all the way to the end you actually don't need them on the end ones there sorry because obviously when a block's been pushed from this one it doesn't need any more power it's going to drop down into there that's the final lane so you want to come down here next then put another um, load of these observers facing down into the blocks and these downward facing observers will pick up the pulse from the one above it so as soon as you put a block there you've created a, a pulse and you'll power the dropper line so that's the, the power for the dropper line there if you just add the loading chest here so if you put a hopper in there and there like that into this end one that's sticking out and uh, we're going to put the 
loading chests here. So I'm making a double height printer. This printer is going to print a nine across by 12 high. So that's the top half of the image and that'll be the bottom half of the image. So anything you put in those chests at the moment, they'll just get drawn through and then, so we've got to create a, uh, something to stop it. So there you go, that torch will now seal both of those hoppers shut. And we're going to flash that off every time you put a power into that and a pulse of electric into that, that'll power the torch off. Just put a block there like that to start that circuit. Um, okay, so if we come to this bit here, just put some comparators face this way, sort of away from the dropper line. Ooh, no, don't do it. don't take an action, but just put some comparators down. These are going to read whatever's in the uh, hoppers there. So, and then just put some redstone dust in here. To complete, okay. Uh, then you want to finish this off by extending it out by four. One, two, three, four, and then do the same again there. One, two, three, and four. Um, for I forget, you need to seal these hoppers shut now underneath. So if you can see where the the two loads of hoppers were there, you want to put a torch on directly underneath that hopper to seal it shut. So, there you go, just pop them on there like that. And what happens is when an item gets filtered through that, through the hopper there, it creates a pulse that doesn't spread sideways, it just goes down there. That block will then send a pulse, switch off the torch and it'll filter through. So, uh, you've got your four and your four. Okay, that's that section completed. Um, this needs filling in with repeaters so you can just go and keep them all on one tick for now um, I'm just going to I'm just going to block it in and I'll go back through and set up the timing so you do need to keep track of what each one is on so it's probably best to keep them all on one tick just for the time being Okay, you do have to sort of check it anyway afterwards, so it doesn't really matter that much. Um, I'll just grab some pistons. Help from the right menu. Um, maybe I need an observer as well. Uh, building block. Um, so I'll do it like that. Okay, so you want to get a sticky piston facing down. So these observers, uh, sorry, these repeaters need to lead into the sticky piston like that. So put one facing down and just drag it all the way across like that. Okay. And do the same with observers. So do it from underneath so that the, the face is in the sticky and the red uh, pulse area is facing down like that. So that's going to put a charge into a regular piston which is underneath it. So you need to leave one gap so when that extends down it connects there. Just put those across like this. And the powder that you're going to print with is going to sit on a platform here like that. Okay. Uh, right. So let's just get the clocks in now which is going to be the kind of the speed and the power. If you just put like one, two, three, just directly in front of that observer face there, and you know, do the same there. One, two, three, coming out from that torch. They're the things you're going to need to power. Um, grab a repeater. Uh, you want a bit of redstone dust there, and there, like that. And then you want to put a sticky piston on the corner there, so that, and then a block with a block on it, so that block lines up with a corner of that redstone there and just come underneath do a couple more uh, this is the bottom one right here I'll do a couple more blocks like that and then put two repeaters and the one in the, going into the piston is on two so that'll create a one tick pulse I just put some redstone there I'm going to make an uh, do you know what you can make an 8 or a 12 tick clock let's try it with an 8 tick clock 
because 12 is quite slow this is the overall speed of the load and this is it isn't fast by any means but the way i'm going to do it you can if you was doing this in survival mode you would need to do a 12 tick clock here so just add an extra two repeaters one on each side you know on two ticks but i'm going to try it with eight uh, hopefully it'll work with that um, and then you want to do the same up here this is this is going to be a four tick clock so Again, with the two repeaters there, there you go, that creates a one tick pulse. And then you need to just build the clock here. So that's a further six blocks there, like that. Um, that would go there. So you want one, two going that way, and one, two going that way. They have to go that way. And the ones, those have to face into that uh, piston and block there. And again, like that, so. Um, I'm just going to grab a switch just to do a quick test as we go. There you go, there's the 40 clock. You can see that's pulsing and that's powering the dropper line. So that works. Um, and try that there. That's the 8 tick clock and that's powering the unloading chest. That's going to be the speed of the printer, the main sort of speed of the printer, really. Um, so at this point, you just need to join those two together um, just any way you can, really. There you go, that'll work. They join together and you want an on off switch that's kind of near so um i'll just leave that for a moment because at the moment these chests they're not gonna there's nothing to make them load in the correct order so you have to from where that like at the, from the side of the top chest there bring some blocks out just from run it underneath bring it around like that see uh build it up there and there and then I need a comparator, so just grab a redstone comparator um, and put the comparator facing out of that top chest and you can run it into a repeater and a repeater and then a little bit of redstone dust and now you can use either chest, if you wanted to just make a 6x9 print you can use either chest, it doesn't make any difference but if you want to do the full picture, as long as there's any sort of block in that top box there in the loading, in, sorry, the top chest there you can see as soon as there's even one block in it, it creates a comparator signal which overrides the torch. So even though that torch is going to be flashing on and off to unload both chests, if there's anything in that top chest, it will seal this chest shut. So it will always load from the top that, to the bottom. So that's how you picture loads in the correct order for like the two sizes. So as long as there's something in there, you can see as soon as you empty that one, then that sort of frees this one up to be loaded. But like I say, if you're just going to print with one, you know, uh, six by nine you could use either chest it makes no difference um and now that's complete really all that's left to do is to make like an on off switch so it doesn't matter where you put this as long as it doesn't interfere with any of the other sort of wiring you know i'm just going to lead it up from there like that and put the on off switch there now that on off switch isn't powering any of these lines or anything like that so it's out of the way it's just it's convenient if you're loading your chest there there's your on off switch for your printer and there the clock's done pretty simple straightforward uh, right okay so should be looking something like this uh, okay let's do the i'm going to do the, the colors now so let me just grab some uh white concrete just the, the white sort of uh because I build with white concrete as well, it, it tends to kind of take the block. So, um, what I think I might do next is put the colours in there. So I use a visual reference. So, this is the order of, uh, I'm going to put the colours in. So I do this just, it, it, it just helps to have like a visual reference. You don't really need it. That's up to the gap. So, just do that. Let me just put something in there. You kind of need something in that gap for in a moment, so uh, it'll be a sec. You can put these colours in in any order. The concrete powder goes in the... Why is that not... That does not seem right. Oh, I haven't added the M1. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, as long It doesn't matter what order you put the colours in as long as it lines up with the concrete powder that you put here 
you know that one would have to be grey that would have to be cyan you know this one here would have to be cyan that this would have to be purple so that, that's all that matters it doesn't matter what order as long as they kind of go together in that way so I'm going to put them in this order because uh, this is like colour zero colour one colour two colour three colour four so that's why I've done them in this order so uh, okay so you see the, the, the top of the hopper there that, that very top hopper these are the ones we're going for on that row that's sticking up and it's really important that you only get half the stack and you drag it across and drop them in like that so grab half like just half the stack it doesn't have to be exactly half but that, that if you do 64 what will happen is you'll flood this this comparative signal will be too strong you'll open up all the lanes around it and the colors will flood out and the filter will break it's not a problem you just have to go if that happens you just go through empty it all out from underneath empty those hoppers right out and reload them again but you know so just be careful it is important that you only grab half the stack so we well, i mean it sits with 18 it's like 20 odd or something i suppose that's going to just sit down and settle to it gets to 18 as you can see that it settles on 18 you get one in the hopper underneath and the rest goes in there so um there you go half stack put it in and you can see it creates a pulse and that actually that's already you know pushed a, a block of color out so you can't really get to it in time it happens almost straight away so okay just load those colors in like that to pink and great And but only half, not the full. If you use 64, it's bad. Oh, no. My controller jumps about. Apologies. <gasps> so, bit of a disaster, but. Yeah, you see how the blues emptied out there. The blues not got the right number in, so purple's okay. It just spreads to the blue, so that's all right. We can just reload a few more in blue. Let's try and get it up to 18. There you go. That should be fine. Just reload it up to 18, and I want to just make sure that it's okay. Yeah, it seems fine. It's all right, you know. Um, so do you know what? It's kind of handy that you can see what happens if you accidentally do it. That's all it is. You want to get that end one over to 18 there so it'll work fine and it really doesn't matter if it's it's just half a stack's about right for it to not uh, to not bleed across <laughs> I have to say in all those times it's the, the the controller just jumps about like that it's not me um it's it's just happens automatically because my controller's really old. Okay, uh, right. So that's the. Th this was concrete that was loading in there. It's yeah, it's the actual concrete. So now, this is what you fill it for. That's what you. So that's what you put in your chest. You draw, you kind of draw your picture with the concrete and you filter for the concrete. Um, at this point now, we're going to need concrete powder. So go and grab your concrete powder, and you want the same colours as before. So, just kind of match those colours over there. Uh, magenta, cyan, yellow, green, and grey. Oh no, pink and grey. So you can just put a couple up. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna do it like three high. I'll show you. Why. Um, I'm actually gonna use some command blocks to keep this full. The ink stack full. You could just stack the ink up, but if you stack the ink up really high. And you need to you need to do this as 12 ticks and the printer is a bit slower i'm going to make it on eight ticks and keep the stacks quite small and use command blocks to fill it because the one of the downsides of these printers is you have to keep refilling this ink all the time you know that's something that you've just got to do so um a way around that is to just use command blocks but if you're going to do it in survival or something and oh you've got something against command blocks just stack the powder as much as you like but you have to do a 12 tick clock for that um so I want light grey, uh, 
cyan, purple, blue, brown, green, red, black. Okay, so light grey and purple. You do want a few blocks, so you know I'm I'm just doing a few here, but you can't you can't just have like one or something. You probably need a few. Uh, okay, and like I was saying before, the only thing that matters really, whichever order you put them in, like the blue concrete and this lane has to match up with the blue powder there and so on, you know, they all have to match up. That's the, that's the only kind of restriction. Uh, all right, so that's that part done. Uh, let's just grab some extra bits now for this next section. Uh, so, we're gonna need some slime blocks. So you want slime blocks and sticky piston. Uh, that's enough for now to be going on with, so. I like to get the position first like that. So you want your slime block on with a, a corner to that so it can be pushed and not affect that. Uh, just do the same on that side as well, I think. So just bring up, just be careful when you're knocking them off there. So there you go, it's on the corner. And they're gonna be um, pushed by sticky pistons behind him there. So, I just put them in. Now obviously that slime block needs room to move, so you want to go underneath it but so you leave go down one and then forward one like that so that next sticky piston is just like with one gap but directly under that slime block and then just kind of repeat that you need seven of those so huh. okay what's that six i think There you go, seven, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it should look like that. And just do the same on the other side. Like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So there's that first bit. Uh, then you're gonna need some observers, so grab some observers. The next thing, uh, next job is to power these up. So see where the this regular piston here is. I just want to check. Yeah, that's a regular piston. See, so um, just put some observers, go underneath them, and point the observers down like this. Where the gap is, those those pistons don't need an observer but all the others do all the others get an observer and the end ones there you put a block over the end ones like that and then let's just carry the power down so when it's level it's one two and then there's another block there so let's bring it to match then it's level one two see the pattern it's always kind of two down like that one two and another one so, ooh. let's just fill these in, bring them all down a little bit. There's one, <laughs> one, two, and that one will get a block. And one, one, two, and that one gets a block, and all the way one, two, and that one gets a block. And you can see those white blocks line up with the pistons at the back there and just bring it down one like that and do the same there this is probably the fastest way to sort of build this section like that uh, okay then if you just come around you can go like one two and join them up with the piston it should be touching kind of the bottom edge of the picture that of the piston one two oh, one two there we go so you can see, looks like that. Pretty straightforward, right? Then you want to do the same on the other side. So it's level with the block, one, two, and a block. One, two, and a block. Let's just fill these in a little bit. One and two, so that'll get a block. 
and see, you know what I'm talking about there, like one, two, block, one, two, block. One, two, block. One, two, and a block. And finally, one, two, and a block. And then come down and across like that. Bring them out. Apologies. Okay. And then it's just one, two, and they should line up with the bottom edge of the piston. Okay, so we're going to put the time in the the timers on next. Going to need some uh, redstone repeaters for the timers. So you want to face him from the middle and face it out from the printer. Run a repeater out that way and one that way. I'll do the timers in a moment. I'm just going to put them all in first. So I'll just put one there, uh, one there, and one there. One there and one there. Um, one there and one there. Okay, and one that way. Same here, one there and one there. One there and that way. And nearly done it. And that way and that way. Okay, so the timings on these, you want two ticks, two ticks. This is three, three ticks and two ticks. Then it's two and two again. Then two and two again. Then two and one. And then two, oops, <laughs> two and one. Sorry about that. So this one is two and one. And then this one is two and one. And this one is one and one. So you don't touch that bottom one. So same on this side, that's two and two. Two ticks, two ticks. This one is three, three ticks, two ticks. And two and two, two and two, two and one, two and one, and one and one. Just leave that. And then you can just fill in the corner like that so it passes the current through it and get rid of the excess block that you don't need there. go finished so one and one yeah uh, two and one check two and one check two and two check two and two three and two two and two there you go so that's all the time is done so now those pistons will go off at the right moment whenever that piston fires they'll all now fire at the right moment to knock those the, the blocks into the middle um now i've done those times i'm going to do these timings up here and um, let me just grab some redstone dust for this first one so uh, all these timers are doing here when the blocks get loaded into the dropper line obviously it's going to take the block a lot longer to get to here like the for the black to be filtered it's going to be way after like for the white to drop in because it's like one of the first ones that's going to get filtered so the delay at this that this causes the delay at this end so that it when the blocks all get filtered down to one point here you drop always in it with a regular interval um no matter what color is chosen and you just you create a delay that sort of compensates for the time it takes the block in the filter so you want the smallest possible delay at this end um that's gonna be there like that so that will trigger this piston after one tick so that's about as fast as it can go um the next three lanes are two ticks so there you go two two and two the, these when you put a block in like that that's just instant that's just instant there's no delay so that counts as zero the block so you put a block in there um next that so it's one two 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 then this one needs three so there you go just do that one two three ticks uh the one after that then is five um so you've already got four obviously there make that five uh, then it changes to seven so that's one two three four five six seven and then the final one on this side 
is 12. So let's go 3, 6, 9, 12. There's a difference that those that are near the gap, they don't have to be pinged through the air with the slime blocks. They just fall onto the platform. So the delay's got to be a little bit longer on the top. It's just trial and error how I've worked out these timings, you know, but they do work. So then on this side, we'll go to 14. So like 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14. Then you've got three rows of 11. So three, six, nine, 11, three, six, nine, 11, three, six, nine, 11, <laughs> 11, sorry, three, six, nine, 11. Then you want a 12. So it's three, six, nine, 12 and a 13. So what, four, seven, 10, 13. Then it jumps to 15. So what, four, eight, 12, 15, and then this one is 16. So just all on four. There we go, and they're the timings for the main circuit board. And this bit uh, put into play. Then got a regular piston, so if you just come down here um, and follow the pattern of the slime blocks, but this time with a regular piston. Like that. So it's kind of one down and one across. That's going to catch these blocks in the middle lane. And actually all of them are going to filter to this point. Um, so I'm going to just kind of do that. Bring it back four like that with one at the end. Put a little dab of redstone uh, in the corner against that block. And a repeater there. And you need any power source. Um, you can literally use any power source that you want. I'm going to use blocks, but you know, you could use a uh, a switch or a torch or anything you wanted really doesn't matter um okay so now whenever a block drops on there i'm going to grab some glass as well okay so you, what you need to leave a get a one high gap there because anything that goes in but then from there just bring that all the way up to there doesn't really matter you can have it from there and, but there needs to be a gap along the bottom because any powder that comes down, the powder is going to drop down from here and slide down and be pushed out there. So, oops, dropping litter. It's got a long way to fall. Um, so, yeah, it'll automatically get pushed off there. And all the colours are now going to filter and come in here. So, um, yep, that's that bit completed. So, you know that the blocks are going to come from here. So, leave yourself a couple of blocks, like let's just a little bit of room for safety, two, three, you know. And then count them off like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there you go. That's that going to be the height that that's the height that your pitch is going to print to. So you want to make sure that this top layer isn't going to kind of bash into here or anything like that. But and that it is actually lined up with where those the, the row that those pistons are on. That's really important, you know. Uh, if you want to double check, can you see it's got to be lined up with that? Like I said, it's dead important, and it also needs to have a gap there. Uh, so, oops, I've got rid of all my building materials there. Uh, let me just grab some of these again because I'm gonna we're gonna make another one of the steps down at the bottom there. Uh, okay, I think I've got everything. So, your blocks are gonna land on there. So another dab of redstone there and. One of those, and then your power source. So you've made another step like that. Uh, then you want to put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pistons in a row like that. Um, and then just bring the glass out back nine here from this end one. One, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine. There you go, and just bring that up to the edge there. Don't need that one. That's why redstone cubes kind of handy for this bit because you're going to put some water in there and that water should just end naturally there so now whenever any powder drops there it's turned into concrete there's obviously different ways to do this this is just how i do it um ooh, i'm going to need an observer so i'm just uh because i've got one from here sorry uh, okay so your observer is going to sit facing this way 
like that with the face at the front. This is the front of the printer. Uh, that sits with her face that way. And you want to put a row of, uh, sorry, platform of four there like that. Then put some blocks underneath here. Just bring them forward one like that. You have to do that because the, you have to do this because the glass gets in the way. So, um, and just put a repeater on one tick going into those blocks. Get some redstone. Do you know what this end one can actually have a step up, but then just put some redstone dust and connect all those up. Uh, just bring it up there onto the platform like that with a repeater on three ticks and you want to pop a piston facing that way so now I'll show you what happens when you, you get your stack of nine your first nine colors or whatever stack up like this you're dropping in you push that observer across and then it gets pushed back into place there so that's how you kind of create your, your rows going up Like that, okay. So, you know that part is working correctly. Um, could actually just do a bit of a test now just to make sure it's all working. Let's just kind of choose a random color. Obviously, you want to use the concrete. Uh, like I say, it doesn't matter which chest you use if you're just doing a test. Let's just put a random line of color there and see. As you can see, it filtering down. There's the signal going down. <laughs> uh, okay, so that wasn't good. And the inks run out, so there you go. It was it was all working obviously, but um there's your problem with the ink running out. Uh obviously I hadn't got rid of those things yet, so uh it would work. Uh, let me just show how it works. It gets pushed into there and then It'll hit the deck there and you know it goes across. So we know this bottom section works, so it's fine. Don't really need to test it, I know it works. Um, the only other thing left to do really now, let me just switch it off, is uh, I'm going to put some command blocks in here uh, just because, like I said, they're not necessary. You can see they're not necessary for the design, but you want to keep that ink stacked up. So I would put them where this piston fires, so every time a block is pushed, that activates the command to create more powder. So you want to just run some observers all the way along the top there behind those regular pistons uh, you're going to need a, a building block and some repeaters so uh, that power source sh should run into the repeaters that you put in there and if you put those on three ticks the observer is going to sense more than one movement. It's going to double pulse, you know, and you only want one pulse going into your command block. So make that one kind of three tick pulse rather than two quick pulses, you know. You can actually, you can have them on four if you want. Three is generally fine. It doesn't really make that much difference, which you have. And then that pulse has to run into a block because otherwise if you direct the power of the command block, you'll electrify the whole block and it'll that'll then set off the ones next to it. And you just want to set off the color that's been selected. So run them into a block and then uh, you need to grab yourself a command block uh, so to that just bring up the console you want to type in uh, backslash give there you go give at p with a small p at p that's the closest player uh, command underscore block there you go and you've got your command blocks so you can then just put those in Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, okay, so just need to set those now. So what you want is for a block of concrete to drop just above that. You don't want it to occupy the same space. So ideally, I'm looking at this. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at a, a if you stand on the top of the block you want. That's how you get. And you've got your coordinates up in the top left of the screen there. You can see that's that zero, uh, two hundred four eighteen. So that's basically where I want to drop the. The first block of color and this color happens white is color zero so you just go to your command block input uh, the command set block 
and then putting the coordinates through that. So that was at zero. It was actually X that was zero. And let's go at like 204. Um, that was the height and 18 on the Z axis. So it's X, Y, Z coordinates. And then tell it you want concrete powder with and zero because zero is white. Or what, you know, that would just be whatever color you put in there. And now when, whenever this piston is activated, do you know what, let's just do a quick uh, test of that. Obviously got no, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to be as quick as possible because I'm, you know, we need to get this out and it has to be kind of under an hour. I'll do it in. Let's just do a quick test row of, oh, if it will stop jumping around just for a moment so we can do something. There you go, let's just put a few in. Doesn't really matter, we'll test that white and you should be able to see the effect. You can see that what's happening and that just now keeps it, that command block will keep the ink topped up so you don't have to constantly. Uh, load the ink and everything. Let's just clear that off. You can see that it's all working and everything. So it's just a case now of going across. So that's all it is. You're looking at your axis there, X, Y, and Z. So position is now one. I, I went right up from the start. So it, X is at zero. X is now at one, uh, at one, two, or four, eighteen, and that'll be for the orange. So let's just go across and get these filled in. Uh, so you want uh, set block, then your X, Y, Z, which is now two, uh, two. Uh, 20418 that was right there yeah? and then concrete powder one so that'll do the same for that for, but for the orange um, again you can just you can, if you do it from here you can kind of see the color that you're activating there so that again that helps so set block this will be column x x is three the rest of it doesn't change it's only the x-axis it changes but if it was oriented different the x-axis might stay the same you might be it might be z axis that you're changing but the height shouldn't change it i've chosen 204 so it should always be 204 and obviously z axis there doesn't change and uh magenta is color two so oh no sorry uh color three we're up to now aren't we this is uh blue light blue let me just check there so we've got zero one that doesn't seem right <laughs> oh it's it's because of that that's okay so zero uh x axis is zero color that shouldn't be two that should be one that was in the wrong place oh sorry about that my bad there you go. So that would be X is 1, Y is 204, Z is 18. And that's where orange is. And it's back out of it. So, sorry, that's why I made a mistake. So, I put that as 2, X is 2. And that would also be color 2. That's why I started on X is 0, because it was supposed to make this bit easier. <laughs> so, you know, X, Y, Z, set block, X, Y, Z coordinates, concrete powder 0. There you go. Uh, X is one, color one. X is two, color two. And set block. So that's three, two or four, eighteen. Concrete powder, three. Yeah. Perfect. Um, two, three. Yeah. Well, it's weird because it starts at zero. That's why I just put me off a little bit because it started at zero. Uh, okay, so uh, set block X is four. Uh, 204 wasn't it uh, 204 18 and that would be color 4 set block so we're up to 5 uh, 204 18 concrete powder 5 it's handy when this like the colors are matching up that's why I'd like to say that's why I put them in this order because it the, the numerically this is how they go along um, so what we're up to uh, pink which is six right so x is six uh, y is two or four eighteen concrete powder six and then gray so set block x is seven uh, two or four eighteen concrete powder seven so hopefully they'll all be correct <laughs> A little bit of confusion at the start there then there's obviously a gap so bear that in mind so this first one now it'll be actually be x will be nine because eight is the gap 
So x is 9, y is 204, z is 18. Concrete powder, that's going to be 8 because yeah, that's going up numerically. Okay, so this will now be uh, 10, then uh, 204, 18, and concrete powder 9 because it's now one behind. That's the cyan color 9. Set block, run to 11, uh, 204, 18, concrete powder 10. Uh, 10 is purple, so uh, then for the blue. Set block, so X is 12, uh, 204, 18, concrete powder 11. And that's for blue, or dark blue. Uh, then one we'll, uh, brown. So set block 13, uh, 204, 18, concrete powder is 12. Then set block uh, 14, X is 14, Y is 204, Z is 18, and create concrete powder 13, which is green. So, you know, the number of your concrete powder would be whichever order you've put them in. You, you know, your coordinates might not line up like mine are, so you'd have to just adjust it to wherever you wanted these blocks to appear from. So, um, what's this? Uh, 15, X is 15, Y is uh, 204, that's 18, and concrete powder 14. Okay, and then finally, X is 16 here, so 16, and then 204, 18, concrete powder is 15, and that is the black colour. So hopefully, hopefully, they're all kind of the correct, <laughs> we're going to be loading with the correct colours. Uh, I could do a test, but I feel like they're probably right. I might just go through and just check that they're right. So 0 and 0, 1 and 1. 2 and 2, 3 and 3, 4 and 4, 5 and 5, 6 and 6, 7 and 7, 9 and 8, 10 and 9, 11 and 10, 12 and 11, 13 and 12, 14 and 13, 15 and 14 and 16 and 15. So they all seem right. I would say that's that's entirely correct. Um, just going to have to uh, bear with me while I make some sort of picture now. Um, not entirely sure. I think I'll do an, an old one that I've, like this. <laughs> wow. You can, you really can just print anything. It really doesn't matter what. I'm going to do something that's kind of challenging for it. Okay, so that's the top half of the picture up there. Uh, let's just do the bottom half here. So that's got to line up. That's maybe a difficulty with doing this sort of thing. You've got to like line up your image, you know. Whatever it is you're doing, make sure it all fits together. Um, there is some kind of clouds there. Uh, okay, let's put uh, like a person there. That's a person. High high def printout this is and a basket. And let's put some kind of grass going along there. And I'm gonna do a tree. 
This is a tree. And you know what? Just a little bit more clouds. I know. They're clouds. And let me just grab some more hair. Uh, more concrete. Sort of fill this in in the background now. Okay, so that picture should look nice. So there's your picture loaded in. Um, that's clear, everything's clear, the command blocks are up, fingers crossed, okay. And just go. So you'll see, it'll, it'll always start unloading from the top here like this. This bottom chest remains sealed because of this. As soon as this one's empty, this will power down and that'll start loading. Uh, you can see the colours get filtered through the lanes. Create the pulse. Obviously those command blocks are keeping the ink full. Uh, they're getting sort of pinged at the right moments there, just whenever activated by the push of the powder off. Then they get pushed all together and filtered. And you can see there's like a... You see how the gap's kind of the same, no matter what the colours are, they're always dropping in with the same sort of gap between them. That space in between them is the balancing of the timers here. That's what you're trying to do, because it doesn't really matter so much when the print is quite slow, but when you start going really fast, it's really, really important that that gap is even so that uh, the, the blocks don't get jumbled up and they all come out in the correct order. You can see it's not the world's fastest printer, it's not the world's slowest printer, you know. It's it's okay, it does it, it does what it's supposed to. Um, this is running at 8 ticks. Like I say, if you wanted to do it in survival mode, you wouldn't be able to use the command blocks. You would need to uh, just make this part here 12 ticks rather than 8. Just, you know, add, add two more on and extend like that in section out there. Make that 12 ticks, then you can just stack up the powder and it's fine. It's fine to kind of drop down at that speed. So, And there you go, there's your picture, a 12 by 9 uh, printed out. That's it. Okay.